Hello, this is Reginald from FrogLogic and today I want to show in this video how Squish with its new support for behavior-driven development and testing can be used to solve the challenge of automating cross-platform GUI tests. So what is the requirement? A requirement we have very often in today's uh, industry is that we have to develop several frontends for the same application so people can use our application on a classic desktop platform, on mobile platforms and through a web browser. So for example we're taking an address book application here for which we have developed several frontends while the functionality should be the same in all of those applications. Now when testing we want to have ideally a single set of tests which can be ran against all the different front ends. Of course that imposes quite some challenges on the test automation since all the front ends are implemented in different ways. To solve that problem we can apply behavior driven development and testing and use the Squish GUI tester as the tool of choice to implement all of that. But now what is the Squish GUI Tester? The Squish GUI Tester is a cross-platform, cross-technology GUI test automation tool, so it supports GUI test automation on pretty much any platform and supporting about any UI technology on those platforms. And with its new version 6.0, it integrates behavior-driven development support very well. Behavior-driven uh, development and testing means that we uh, describe the application's behavior in high-level feature files in the so-called Gherkin language using given when and then clauses and those high-level feature files serve as test steps or as a storyboard for the test automation. So with that the uh, tests or the feature files are clearly separated from the implementation allowing us to have one set of tests which we then can run against different implementations of the application. So just as an example let's look at such a feature file. Here is a feature file for adding a person to an empty address book. So we would say that we have a scenario to add a person and in there we have certain steps such as given that an empty address book is open, when I enter a person with some data then I want to find one address in this contact list. Now when we take a closer look at this uh, feature file we see that those steps um, start with different keywords either given, when or then. Every given step is a so-called precondition for the test, every when step is an action step for a test and every then step is an expectation or verification step for a test. So now let's go ahead and implement what we've talked about. But instead of showing further slides, let's just do it in a live demonstration. On the screen we now see the IDE of the Squish GUI tester and already created a new uh, test suite for the address book application, created a new test case um, for the feature of an empty address book and entered the steps for the scenario of adding a new person. So now we need to implement those steps. We will do that initially for the web-based frontend of the address book application. I will now click on record to record the three steps which I entered. This first queries me for the URL of the address book application, so I just confirm that and this opens now the address book in our web browser. So now we shall implement the first step given an empty address book is open. To complete that I will click on new to remove all pre-existing entries so we now have an empty address book open. So we are done with this step and I confirm that to continue with the second step. In the second step I shall enter a new person with the given data to the address book. So I will perform the actions for that now. And now click the uh, continue button in the control bar to get to the third step. And in this third step I shall verify that one address is found in the contact list. I will insert a property verification for that purpose which gets me back to the Squish IDE so I can now use the spy to pick the table object of the address book application and in there I can found a num children property which can verify with the expected value 1. So I insert that verification and 
uh, mark this step also as done in the control bar which finishes the recording and with that we have implemented all three steps. So we can just take a look at the generated script code for, uh, for the recording I've done. So this is a step of confirmation that the recording has been correct. I'll now just run this test once and see what's happening. So this will now replay the actions um, which we just recorded. And looking at the results in the Squish IDE, we see that everything passed. So with that, we have done the initial implementation of our test for the web-based frontend. Now, after having successfully implemented this test for our web-based frontend of the address book application, I will switch to prepared test suite, where I did the same recording against a JavaFX-based desktop client of the address book application, and also against a native Android client of the same application. For that, I've reorganized my steps into three subdirectories, for, uh, one directory for each platform which you want to automate against, and in each subdirectory we find a steps.py file with the Python implementation of the specific test steps for the given technology. So we have the same for Android, for JavaFX, and also for web, which is what we have just seen before. But still, we just have a single feature file which defines the test steps or the expected application's behavior in the Gherkin language. And now, in order to run the single feature file for each of the technologies which I have implemented the step for, I adopted the test.py file of this test case, which is the driver script which actually runs a feature file. So instead of just running this feature file once, I put that into a loop, um, uh, looping through web, Android, and JavaFX, loading the uh, correct um, script files with the implementations and hooks from the given subdirectories, and then running the feature file. Now, to see that this really works, Let's just run it once, but uh, to make this a bit shorter, let's just run one of the two scenarios um, to avoid that we have to wait too long. So I will just run the second scenario, which will now run it against all three frontends. So first, it starts off with the web test. So the web browser is being launched and this scenario is run in the web browser. Now it's doing the same on the Android um, device, or in this case I'm having an Android emulator here, um, which is emulating an Android phone, and you see the test now being executed um, in the Android emulator. Just takes a moment longer. And now the same tests will be run against a JavaFX client or the desktop client of our application. So we see the same steps are being executed for each of the UI frontends, but how they are exactly executed is of course different depending on the UI client. But as a result, at the end, we see that this scenario passed, which means it passed for all three frontends. And here down in the test results, we also see that this scenario has been run for uh, three times, once for each UI frontend. So what I have just shown very briefly in this video is that the abstraction which BDD is providing to us is very well suited um, to abstract away the test logic from the actual implementation, which also allows to have um, the same test being executed uh, against different implementations, for example, to allow testing against different um, UI frontends, which are functionality-wise identical. That's it for today. Um, thanks for your attention and uh, if you have any further interest in Squish, please visit www.froglogic.com where you can also get a trial version of the Squish GUI tester. Bye.